The following is an exclusive presentation of TPC Communications. The last time Pitt and South Carolina met was in the 1980 Gator Bowl. The Panthers dominated 38-9. Saturday, Jackie Sherrill took his Panthers back to South Carolina. Once again, it was the Panthers on top in a big way. All the talk in the two weeks prior to the trip down to South Carolina was about what a big test this would be for the Pitt team. Well, they took the test, the results are in, and they passed, but they may have learned a lesson or two in the process. But if ever there was a case of a game not being as close as the score indicated, this was it. Pitt totally dominated South Carolina in the first half, offensively, defensively, and with the special teams, but mostly Pitt did it with Dan Marino. And how about the start that Dan Marino is off to? They have to rewrite the Pitt record book every time he raises his arm. The guy who helped Marino do a lot of rewriting this week was John Brown. And opponents will have to start paying a little more attention to the tight end from here on in when they're playing Pitt. And where last year it was Hugh Green, Jerry Boyarski, and Ricky Jackson who did the dominating on defense, this year it's the new kids named Pizzoli, Dolman, Cranach, Pelusi, Woods, and Moss. The story this week was Dan Marino in the record book. Six touchdown passes to three different receivers. We'll have all the action and the story of Panther Pride, which is brought to you by Westinghouse and the 140,000 Westinghouse employees worldwide. By Miller High Life, if you've got the time, we've got the beer. And by Golf Oil, who suggests you try Golf Super Unleaded, the gas with guts. It helps eliminate knocks and things. In the first two games, the young Pitt defense had played better than Jackie Sherrill could have possibly expected, and everybody was waiting to see if they could keep it up when the competition got tougher. Well, that answer came early, and South Carolina quarterback Gordon Beckham found out right away that rolling out wouldn't be the answer for his offense. And he found out on his second play from scrimmage that when he went back to pass, he would have some unwelcome visitors. And Jackie Sherrill found out early that his team would pass the physical exam with flying colors. Dan Marino started off with what may have been his best day ever by working with the backs and Brian Thomas, who was getting a start at tailback. The Pitt offensive line felt that South Carolina had the best defensive front they'd see all year, and the early pressure from that front five didn't seem to bother Dan Marino at all. This is called throwing under pressure. And what better way to loosen up the pass defense than with a run? A little Wayne the Train. Dan Marino and the Pitt offense did an excellent job of mixing things up on their first possession with Marino letting the backs run and letting the backs catch. And when the drive came up short, Snuffy Everett came up wide. South Carolina gets a short stay of execution. So what do you say on the next possession we get the wide receivers into the act a little bit? And you can't get much more wide open than Julius Dawkins is here. And you can't find a hole much wider than this to run through, so run through it. Up until this week, the pit passing game had been mostly Dan Marino and the wide receivers, but this week, John Brown made his presence known in a big way. And he makes his presence in the end zone count for six. And Snuffy Everett's extra point makes it 7 nothing Pitt. Jackie Sherrill has made his presence known in the Pittsburgh community by doing more than coaching good football teams.
being involved in a charitable organization such as leukemia has certainly benefited a lot of people and it, and it benefits me and we started having a golf tournament and we're trying to raise money and uh, we had it and we didn't raise very much money and so i said hey let me call some of my friends let me call uh, some of my coaching friends throughout the country and some of the head coaches and let's bring them in here to the university of pittsburgh or bring them into to pittsburgh and, and have a golf tournament and let's proceed to go to leukemia and so we tried it two years ago we had a uh, a golf tournament at Oakmont. It was very successful. We raised twenty-eight thousand uh, dollars. This year we had one at, at the Field Club, and this year is one of the, a little more successful at the Field Club. Uh, we're able to raise thirty-eight thousand dollars, and hopefully next year we can go and, and raise more. But the response uh, was, was tremendous. So we invited uh, Dick Vermeil. Dick Vermeil came in and, and did a super job. Uh, uh, Coach Knox from Buffalo Bills uh, came in, uh, and those two added a lot. Uh, uh, Don Needham uh, uh, from West Virginia, Bill Yeoman from Houston uh, came in, Matt Cavanaugh came in and played from the uh, uh, New England Patriots, uh, Webster from the Steelers, uh, Jack Ham from the Steelers, and certainly with that type of people or those type of people that are involved in, in the tournament, they've made it very successful and, and they enjoy playing it, but also the people that play with them enjoy it. The monies from this event will go into our programs of education, research, and our very active patient aid program here in Western Pennsylvania. Coach Cheryl is the prime reason why we were able to have such a successful golf tournament. He has been very, very supportive of the Leukemia Society for quite some time now, and we're very pleased to know that he's going to be in Pittsburgh for quite a few more years. Jackie Sherrill is pleased that these two guys will be around for a few more years. Rich Cranack will be around for a while. He's a junior. And Chris Dolman will be around for even longer than that. He's only a freshman. And let's hope Chris grows some in the next three years. Right now, Chris is only 6'6", 220. Now, if the South Carolina quarterbacks want to see how you throw the rollout pass, it goes something like this. And John Brown gets his second touchdown and Pitt is up 14 to nothing. Count them, two touchdowns for John Brown. Chris Dolman must have been enjoying the show the offense was putting on because he puts an end to this South Carolina possession with another big sack. And the offense will start the second quarter with the ball and the lead. The South Carolina front five have been pressuring Dan Marino, but on the first play in the second corner, Danny figured, hey, they can't pressure me if I don't have the ball, so he got rid of it in a hurry. And with a little help from Julius Dawkins, Marino is halfway to a new Pitt record for touchdown passes, and Pitt has a 21-0 lead. Marino's passing has helped his receivers show up in the national rankings through the first month of the season. Barry Compton and Dawkins were tied for eighth in the country in receptions coming in. But even with Marino, every once in a while, the wrong guy ends up with the ball. And this time, it gives South Carolina the first and only good field position they would have in the first half. But all it does is give the Pitt defense a chance to show what it can do. Bill Moss can shut down the run. Pelusi and Sinceri aren't going to give you a whole lot of room to run either. And if you think you're going to throw it, you'll have to get out of Chris Dolman's way. And there won't be a touchdown this trip. And as a matter of fact, there won't be a field goal either. Jim Carlin had to be figuring he wasn't going to get too much revenge this time around. If Mr. Carlin still had revenge in mind, he had to be forgetting about it when Dan Marino and Brian Thomas started back to work. That was only 13 yards. Marino was in a little bit of a hurry, so he knocks off 23 on this one. A little help from Julius Dawkins. And Julius has been giving Dan a lot of help, filling the void left by the injured Dwight Collins. Week after week, he just seems to get better. And just in case Fralick, Sams, and Boris are getting bored with pass blocking, run the train through their area for 11 more. We haven't seen much of Barry Compton yet this week, until right here. And that one worked. Let's try Barry again. This time, it's good for six. Snuffy Everett was good for one more, and Pitt leads 28-0. And what's this? 
a completed pass. Yeah, but it's also a loss of a yard, thanks to Rich Cranack and Dan Short. And it's plays like this that keep South Carolina from getting a point in the first half and put the pit offense in a position to get 28 of their own. We'll be back with more Panther pride right after this. Pitt had passed the first half of the test. The second half looked simple. Even though South Carolina came out looking like they thought they still had a chance. But before South Carolina could get carried away, it was time for Pat McQuaid to bring Mr. Beckham down to earth. When you're behind 28 to nothing, what have you got to lose? Well, one thing you don't have to gain is a first down, and it's Pitt's ball. And Marino and Dawkins continue their passing clinic. It's five touchdowns for Marino and a 35-0 lead for Pitt. As usual, South Carolina was forced to punt. But not as usual, something goes wrong for Pitt. And South Carolina has the ball. And two plays later, South Carolina has a touchdown. And Pitt doesn't have a shutout. But Dan Marino wasn't finished yet. He was on his way to 346 yards passing. Wayne the Train adds a few extra yards here to Danny's total. Brian Thomas got a chance to start, and he figures he should add to his total, too. 17 yards this time, and another pit first down. This was the game for John Brown to emerge as another weapon for Dan Marino to work with, and another problem for opposing defenses to worry about. John Brown values the memories of his past and also the meaning of friendship. When I was a senior in high school and the schools began recruiting me for football, the Naval Academy got into it and they began recruiting me. And I decided I wanted to play for major college football. At the Naval Academy, I could do that, graduate from the Naval Academy. It's, it's very prestigious to come out of one of the military schools. They're fine institution. So they sent me to a prep school up in Newport, Rhode Island to get my SATs up and my grade point average up. And I didn't do that. They were still interested enough in me for football to send me to another prep school down in Harlem in Texas. So I went down there and, and um, I got my grades up. My scores rose very high. And I uh, had a good football season, good basketball season, track season. While I was going to school down there, one of my friends down there was a kid named Greg Zingler, and his father was, just got the defensive end job at Pitt. And so Greg went home over Christmas and was talking about me. His father decided to recruit me. I really enjoy writing. I, I major in English writing at Pitt. I like to, I've been writing poetry for a long time. I took up the guitar and I learned how to play the guitar fairly well. So. I, and I've, uh, you know, when I was in high school, I began putting my poetry to music. So, of course, I'm writing songs now. What I'd like to do when I'm done at Pitt, when my football career's over, if I don't get drafted, or if I do, and when that's, when everything's over, I'd like, first thing I'd like to do is take a long vacation and write something, you know, like a short story, a book. A great American novel would be nice. Oh, this is my land, and these are my people. <laughs> you know, I've played ball with Ricky, and through Ricky, I've met Timmy, and and through them, I've met Frankie and Denny. Football is very, it's very important to me. I would, you know, I'm, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take it as far as I can. If someone asks me, do you play football? The first thing I'm gonna say to them, I'll ask them, I'll answer that with a question, does it matter? If it's important to them, I would like to know why. Why is it important to you that I play football, you know? My relationships, I want them to be based on my personality, my friendship with them. The friendship really has nothing to do with what I do on the football field. 
Brown had his best day on the football field Saturday. Three touchdown catches. And when Dan Marino thinks about the pit record for touchdown passes that he set, he'll think about the help that he got from John Brown. But give South Carolina credit. They didn't give up. 23 yards here. Penalties on two big fourth down plays kept the South Carolina offense on the field a little bit too long. And they turned the penalties into points. And it's 42 to 14. Even the pit defense couldn't stop them on first and goal at the one. It still looks like no contest, but don't tell South Carolina. Another turnover pumps them up even more. And all of a sudden, it's 42-21. And the Pitt defense played as though they still knew there was a lot of playing to be done. And if Hugh Green and Ricky Jackson were the bookends, Michael Woods and Chris Dolman are the bookends, volume two. And here's another chapter in Michael Woods' book. When you're down 21 and it's late in the fourth quarter, everybody in the stadium knows you have to throw. That includes Dan Short. The only thing left for South Carolina is to try to make it respectable. A nice, respectable 36-yard gain helps. And the last touchdown of the game makes it 42-28. Respectable for South Carolina, but another win and 3-0 for Jackie Sherrill and Pitt. And we'll have more Panther pride right after this. There's no question Pitt totally dominated the first half, but the second half was a completely different story, and Jackie Sherrill has some thoughts on that. Well, there's no question the first half, uh, the game was lopsided. They had a minus 18 yards rushing. We dominated the game. We had 34, po uh, five points on the game, on the board. I mean, we were doing things. I think we only had to punt one time in the first half. And how about the players? How do they feel about the difference between the first and second halves? Uh, I thought we played well till the end there when we start giving up the points, but uh, you know, we got lax. We are up by so many points. It's going to happen. But uh, as far as the first half, and, uh, you know, we're up 42 nothing. Before that, we were playing great ball. I feel that the, the game was just a, a little too easy. I wish we would have came in something like 14 nothing and a half to make us really go out there and play instead of 28 nothing. And things don't get any easier this week. It's West Virginia down in Morgantown. And anybody who follows Pitt football knows that anything can happen when you go to Morgantown. The last time I was down there, it was the last game ever played in uh, that old stadium. And there's some wild boys down there. So uh, we'll be ready for that, though. We'll be up for the challenge. They're a tough team. It's going to be a good game. You know West Virginia is going to be up for this game, too. They always are for Pitt. And Jackie Sherrill is going to have to make sure his team is ready so that they can avoid an upset. Well, anytime you play in Morgantown, it's it's uh, it's a big rival game, but playing down there is a very tough to play. To play and playing here today has helped us. That certainly will help us to get into the crowd and do the right things and uh, uh, you know be prepared for it. West Virginia features a wide open attack led by quarterback Oliver Luck. He's the keystone to helping West Virginia to its best start since 1975. His top receivers include junior tight end Mark Rao and leading touchdown receiver sophomore Rich Holland. running attack has not been overly impressive with its top rusher Curlin Beck gaining just over three yards per carry. Defensively, the Mountaineers have been ball hawks, led by a pair of defensive backs, sophomore Steve Newberry and senior Lynn Murray. Each has two interceptions. Outside linebacker Darrell Talley is the overall defensive leader the Mountaineers are waiting in ambush for the Panthers.
That's Pitt in West Virginia next week, and we'll have all the action and the stories of Panther Pride. Panther Pride has been brought to you by Westinghouse and the 140,000 Westinghouse employees worldwide. By Light Beer, everything you always wanted in a beer and less. And by Gulf Oil, who suggests you try Gulf Super Unleaded, the gas with guts. It helps eliminate knocks and pings. The executive producer of Panther Pride is Richard L. Clauser. This show was produced and directed by Doug Kennedy. Creative consultant, Guido D'Elia. Associate producer, Bill Dickhouse. and technical facilities by TPC Communications Pittsburgh. This has been a TPC production.